Today, a mortgage stress deep dive. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to this post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Well, I've run my January model, and so today I'm going to discuss the latest with regard to mortgage stress, rental stress, investors' stress, and indeed overall financial stress amongst households in Australia. But before I start that, I just want to highlight an article which has just arrived in from New Zealand, where the article says that the Reserve Bank of New Zealand is concerned that half of first home buyers face mortgage distress when rates hit 6%. Now, the interesting thing about this particular article is that it starts to use the argument about serviceability risks, which is a sort of proxy for what I've been doing with mortgage stress for quite some time. So before I get into the Australian data, I just want to go through some of the key points from the New Zealand article. So they start out by saying that the New Zealand Reserve Bank is concerned that half of last year's first home buyers could face difficulty servicing their mortgages if mortgage rates hit 6%. This is especially concerning following first home buyers mortgage binge in 2021, where they borrowed $17.88 billion across 32,493 separate loans. That borrowing is more than $10 billion higher than four years prior, when first home buyers borrowed $8.4 billion across 21,685 loans. The warning comes from a September 21 briefing to Finance Minister Grant Robertson from the Reserve Bank, which was released to the Herald under the Official Information Act. At one point here, this means that this was in play before the recent interest rate rises, which of course have been coming through from the Reserve Bank in New Zealand. So they were aware of this some months ago, which I find very interesting. The paper said, New Zealand's surge in house prices in the last 12 months has meant that the average mortgage has become larger and therefore a small increase in interest rates would have a bigger impact on debt servicing costs than normal. The bank reckoned if mortgage rates hit 6%, 49% of first home buyers would face serviceability stress. In this context, serviceability stress does not mean the borrower would default Instead, it measures the number of people who will need to sharply reduce their living expenses to keep on top of their mortgage. Banks usually test if borrowers can continue servicing their mortgages at rates of 6% before offering them a loan. This is important, they said, for the bank, because if large numbers of homeowners cut back on spending, economic growth will slow. And the bank reckons that when mortgage rates hit 6%, 23% of own occupiers and 34% of investors could find themselves in distress too. Now this is a really important article insofar that for the first time I actually see a central bank recognising the impact that high mortgage serviceability costs have on overall economic growth. In other words, if you lend people too much, they have to pay too much of their income to service those loans and it has a negative impact on overall economic growth. Well bingo, finally the pennies dropped. Of course I've been saying this for quite some time despite the fact that both in Australia and New Zealand and elsewhere the recent strategy has been to get people to borrow more, get over bigger mortgages and then struggle to pay when rates rise and rates are likely to rise. As you know I've been talking quite recently about the yield curve implied from the ASX. And I'll put that chart up again because I want to highlight that the markets are signalling in Australia, as well as in New Zealand by the way, very significant rate rises ahead. If those rate rises translate to higher mortgage rates, then we have a problem. Which sort of takes me directly then 
to my mortgage stress modeling because you may know that I do this every month. And just to explain, I use my core market model to take the information from my rolling surveys, 52,000 over the year, and then we calculate for each of the households in our survey the impacts of their financial profile and particularly whether they've got a mortgage, how that's being serviced, what their rents are if they're in rental accommodation, or indeed overall investor profiles if they're in fact a property investor. We can slice and dice the data all sorts of different ways, by location, by segment, and that gives us some significant insights as to what's really going on. And we also can overlay some of our scenarios, which means that we can then say, well, what happens if prices would arise or if rates would arise? How does that play out? And the core market model also powers our home price scenarios directly. So we take mortgage stress, the price trajectory, the buying and selling intentions, the migration data, the economic data like CPI, wages, employment, put all of those into the core market model, overlay the scenarios, and then we can look at information down to a postcode level, as well as at a region and state level. And by the way, we also are still providing our highly popular one-to-one -one service, where we can have a conversation about a particular suburb and we can look in some detail at what is going on. Now, this isn't financial advice, of course, but I can look at house price trend data and also look at the stress information from my models and we can perhaps talk a little bit about what the trends ahead may be. And this conversation generally over Zoom or by phone takes about an hour. There is a cost involved. And so if you're interested in contacting me with regard to this service, then reach for me my back blog. The details are below. But by the way, the bookings are three to five weeks out because of the volume of inquiries that we're getting. Anyway, now let's look at the mortgage stress for January 2022 from the model. And the first thing to look at is the overall levels of mortgage stress. In January 2022, they were at 41.2% of mortgaged households, so slightly down from last month, but still relatively high compared to February 2020 when they were at 32.9%. Now, that, of course, is an important milestone because that was before COVID hit. In other words, the consequences of COVID and the loose lending standards and low interest rates and everything that's happened has lifted mortgage stress by around 10%. And that's one reason why the household debt ratio, which is standing at 184.6 according to the RBA, is rising. Not surprising because while some households did indeed start repaying their mortgages and paying down, particularly when they pulled money out from super, many others also got larger mortgages and the mortgages are much, much bigger now. And in fact, if you look at the recent ABS data, you can see the growth is 15 to 20 percent higher than it was before COVID hit. So people have bigger mortgages and therefore that New Zealand commentary is totally appropriate. Now, this is the December 21 snapshot. So we were at 41.79 percent in terms of mortgage stress last month. This month, it's dropped slightly to 41.18%, small drop. And again, what I've done is to highlight in yellow those elements where the stress levels have risen, and the alternative colour is where rates have dropped a little. And you can see there across the ACT, mortgage stress, rental stress, investor stress, and overall financial stress amongst households have risen in every category. Whereas in New South Wales, the rates are down across the board, just slightly. In the Northern Territory, mortgage stress is up, rental stress is down, investor stress is up, and overall financial stress is down. In Queensland, the mortgage stress is higher, the rental stress is higher, the investor stress didn't change much, and the overall financial stress is higher. In South Australia, mortgage stress is down slightly, but rental stress is up, and investor stress is down, and financial stress is up. And in Tasmania, slight reduction in mortgage stress, 
a slight rise in rental stress, a rise in investor stress, and an overall rise in financial stress. In Victoria, mortgage stress is down slightly, rental stress is up, investor stress is up, and overall financial stress is slightly down. And in Western Australia, mortgage stress is up, rental stress is up, investor stress is up, but overall financial stress is just down a little. And when we look at it across the board for the whole country, it's rental stress that is rising at the moment, whereas at an aggregate level, the others are slightly lower. Now, it's important to understand why this is the case. There are three factors. Firstly, the lockdowns have loosened a little. And whilst there are informal lockdowns in some areas, there are more people back in work. Of course, we also had the holiday period, which meant that in some cases people weren't earning as much. The second point is that rents are rising, not necessarily everywhere, but in significant pockets in regional areas and also in and around some of our cities, not necessarily in Sydney and Melbourne, but elsewhere. Perth is an interesting example where rents were going up quite fast, but now they've hit a bit of a barrier. Investor stress, of course, continues to struggle because of the, the lack of migration, the lack of students coming in, the lack of international visitors. And so particularly those in high rise apartments, they are finding things very difficult at the moment. And if we look at overall financial stress, which is sort of the aggregate, essentially where the unlocking has been a little bit stronger, like in New South Wales, stress is down a bit. Whereas states where the locking is still in place or indeed stronger, stress has risen. So there is a strong correlation between what's happening with COVID and overall mortgage stress and other types of stress too. But I would make the point that it is the big mortgages and interest rates which is also driving the problem. Because when I look at the data, I see three factors influencing overall financial stress. The first is interest rates. As rates rise, that means it costs people more. And of course, some people have already seen the fixed rates rise as they lock in. Variable rates, though, are still pretty low, but that may change ahead. As secondly, the cost of living are rising very fast. And in my analysis of a typical food basket for a typical household, over the last year, the cost of basic stables are about 8%, much higher than the average CPI. But of course, people are feeling it, as well as fuel and other costs, including, by the way, even costs for school fees, childcare, and other factors too. And this takes me to my definition of stress. So I'm looking at it in cash flow terms, money in, money out. How much money is coming into the household? How much is going out on the various commitments they have, including the mortgage or the rent or, or whatever? And what we see is that when households have issues with serviceability, they hunker down, they spend less. They might grab money from a deposit account if they've got savings, although some households in stress don't. Or they might indeed decide to get another loan. And one of the factors we should be looking at is the rise of credit, particularly credit cards, buy now, pay later, or even payday loans, because there is a strong correlation between households who are stressed and the need to try to grab more debt. This, again, is something which is not fully understood by a lot of the analysts because they only look at the mortgage element of the financial commitment. But you've got to look at the total. You've got to look at all the money in, all the money out, all the commitments. The other factor to bear in mind is that incomes are still compressed. While some people have been able to lift their incomes by switching jobs, others are still in jobs where there have been no pay rises, they have less hours, and in fact, we're still seeing considerable fragmentation around multiple jobs, particularly multiple part-time jobs, to try and make ends meet. So this is an important story when it comes to what's going on in the real economy. And as the Reserve Bank of New Zealand said, 
if people are spending significant amounts on servicing their mortgage, or indeed their rent, I guess, then they're going to spend less elsewhere. This has a dampening effect on the overall economy. OK, so now we're going to look at the same information but cut by our segments. And here are our master segments. This is a very powerful way of understanding what's going on. And the first thing to observe is that young growing families is where a lot of the problems are. In fact, if you take a look across here in the mortgage stress column, 72% of young growing families are in financial stress. 44% of them in rental stress, 26% in investor stress and overall 58% in financial stress. So the fact is that the financial stress metric is quite powerful when it identifies particular segments. And of course, within those young growing families, what we find is a lot of them are first time buyers. Many of them have bought in the last couple of years. And recently, the government said 300,000 households were pulled forward thanks to the initiatives, including Home Builder and the various other strategies that were put in place by the government to try and pull people forward, including the first home buyer grants. So young growing families are definitely under the pump. The other segments that we're looking at are the battling urban and the disadvantaged fringe. These are people living on the suburban fringe, often in the high growth corridors, high growth meaning a lot of new building underway, a lot of homeland packages in the next suburbs. Not necessarily high growth in terms of property price growth. And there, 66% are in mortgage stress in the battling urban group and 63% in the disadvantaged fringe. Rental stress is also very high. Investor stress, not so much because many of these don't actually hold investment properties. And the overall financial stress is pretty high. Then I want to highlight the multicultural establishment category. These are first generation migrants to Australia. Many of these also buy in those high growth corridors. Around 32% are in mortgage stress, but 53% are in rental stress, which puts them in the same category as young affluents. There is some investor stress too, and overall financial stress is quite high. And then the last point to make is the more affluent groups, particularly the exclusive professionals, who are the most well off in terms of income, and the young affluents who tend to be younger and perhaps a little more affluent than the average young person, but not necessarily in the same category as the exclusive professionals. Both of those are exhibiting some degree of mortgage stress, rental stress, and indeed investor stress. And as a result of that, we do see some rather interesting trends in terms of which postcodes are actually registering high levels of stress. Some of those are in segments that you may find surprising. But the point I want to make is that this financial stress issue is not just an issue of the people out on the urban fringe or first time buyers. It is quite broad across the economy. Now, what we can then do is to go into the next level of granularity. We'll look at mortgage stress first, and I've sorted this by the highest mortgage stress count of households in a particular postcode. And the postcode with the highest level of stress this month is postcode 2170, and that includes Liverpool, Moorbank, Mount Pritchard, and Warwick Farm. That's a real high growth suburb. The second highest, though, is in Queensland, in postcode 4350, in and around Toowoomba. And there, 9,761 households, roughly, are in mortgage stress. That's 62% of all the households in the area. Then we go down to Narry Warren in Victoria, 3805. This is another high growth area, including Fountain Gate and Narry Warren, 8,800 or 73% of borrowing households. Then we go across to WA, to 6065, which includes places like Hocking and Tapping and Wanneroo, 8,736 there. 
Then we come back to Victoria to 3806, which includes Berwick and Huckaway, 8,313. Then we go to Tasmania to Launceston, very important regional area, of course, postcode 7250, and there 8,237 households are in stress. And I want to highlight here that according to our data, almost all of the households in this area are under financial pressure if they have a mortgage. Now, that, of course, is a combination of prices going up, mortgages going up, incomes not going up. Then we go across to Sydenham in Victoria, and that includes Sydenham, Hillside and Delahaye, postcode 3037, and there 7,409 households are in stress at 71%. Then we go to another Victorian postcode, Pakenham, Pakenham Upper, that's postcode 3810, and there 7,381 households are in stress, and that's 75% of households. And then we go to another regional area at Ballarat East, 3350, with 7,239 or 75% of households. And then we go to postcode 3029, Hoppers Crossing, and that's of course another Victorian postcode, 6,508 with 35%. And just to highlight as we go down the page, Orange in regional New South Wales, is also on the list, as well as Mount Anna and Mount Druitt. And right down the bottom there, you can see that we also have a South Australian postcode 5108, including Salisbury Downs, and there around 6,000 households are in difficulty. So again, the point I want to make is there are particular pockets, particular postcodes, where households are in significant difficulty. A lot of them are in high growth corridors where there's a lot of new building going on, where a lot of people have bought recently off the plan, first time buyers or recent migrants, with large mortgages and frankly, with fragile incomes. Now let's switch over and look at rental stress. And in the rental stress column, the postcode across Australia with the highest proportion of rental stress is, well, surprisingly or not, Melbourne 3000 with 13,060 in rental stress. Now, there's a bunch of combinations there, including, of course, the fact that many people were in the CBD because they're living and working in the CBD, often in hospitality. And of course, much of that has been shut down informally or formally because of COVID. Then we go to postcode 2170, that's in New South Wales, of course, 10,913 there, and that includes Liverpool, Liverpool South, and Mount Pritchard and Warwick Farm. Then we go up to Queensland to postcode 4217, and that includes Main Beach and Service Paradise. And there's around 9,400 households in rental stress there. Now, some people might be surprised, but one of the observations is that rentals are rising significantly here, partly because of some interstate demand, but also because a lot of people who are renting are also working in the tourist sector. And of course, the tourist sector has been very much underperforming because of the lack of international visitors. Then we go across to postcode 2540 around Jarvis Bay and Sussex Inlet, another regional area. And here it's worth highlighting that one of the things that is still going on is that there is still a fallout from the bushfires a couple of years ago. Rentals are also rising because there is strong demand for the remaining properties in the area. So we have more than 9,000 in rental stress. Another example of an area with issues is up in the central coast around West Gosford, 2250. And that includes, of course, Gosford and the surrounding areas. And there, 8,600 are in rental stress. Again, we've seen a very significant rise in rentals, not least because people were moving out from Sydney and going north and going south, partly because of COVID and partly because of working from home. The next one on the list is postcode 2560. And that includes Campbelltown and Glen Alpine. 
And the point about this area again is that it is a high growth area, more than 8,600. And here, more than 70% of households who are renting have financial issues. Then we go to Toowoomba, once again, 4350, with more than 8,400 or 37% of households in rental stress. Then we go to Blacktown, again in New South Wales, 2148, and there 8,300 or 81% of households are in rental stress. And as we go down the list, we can see continuing trends. Mount Druitt, another high growth area, and uh, also up in Queensland, the area of 4670, which includes the areas around Bundaberg, 8,363. So some regional areas are being severely hit, partly because rents are rising quite fast. Then we look at stressed investors. So investors who are essentially struggling to cover the costs of their investment property and about half of all the property investors are underwater from a cash flow perspective. The postcode with the largest number of stressed investors is Victorian postcode 3000 where 4513 or 76% of investors are having difficulty. Then we find that it's surface paradise, main beach, same issue with about 58%. And of course, there's a bit of a correlation because if in fact renters are having difficulty paying the rents, then investors are going to be in strife too. Then we go across to New South Wales, postcode 2010, to Darlinghurst and Surrey Hills, where 4,100 stressed investors are there. That's because there are a lot of vacant properties. A lot of investors are unable to let those properties unless they drop their rents. And that's around 70% of investors. Then we go to 4670 and 4655, both up in Queensland. And then we go across to Mandra, Meadow Springs, that area, 6210. You know I talk about Mandra as a bit of a canary in the coal mine. Well, today, 31% of investors are stressed there which is more than 3,500. And one of the factors there is that prices, whilst they have risen a little in recent years, are still way down from where they were a decade ago. Then we come back to New South Wales, to Crow's Nest and Greenwich. And there, 3,300 stressed investors are in circulation. That's postcode 2065 or 66%. A lot of that is some of the more recently constructed high-rise property. Then we go to Labrador and Southport in Queensland, 4215, where 3,200 stressed investors exist, or 46%. And we then go to Victoria, St Kilda and St Kilda South, where 3,218 stressed investors exist, or 66%. That's postcode 31H2. And then we go down to Sussex Inlet and Jarvis Bay in New South Wales, again another regional centre. And not surprisingly, if renters are under pressure, investors are under pressure too, about half or so. And finally, just a quick recap on overall aggregate financial stress. So this is a higher level aggregate measure, and it takes account of mortgage stress, rental stress, and investor stress. And the postcode that wins the prize with the highest level of financial stress is postcode 2170, including Liverpool and Liverpool South. And then we go to postcode 2560, which includes Campbelltown and a lot of areas southwest of Sydney, at 79.89% of all households. Then we go to Toowoomba, 4350, at 44.75%. And then we go to Melbourne, postcode 3000, where 78% are in financial stress. And then we come back to Mount Druitt, Lethbridge Park in New South Wales, 2770, and then Surface Paradise. And so you can see quite a correlation between the overall levels of financial stress and the granular information that we discussed earlier. Now, here's another point that's worth thinking about. 
with the one and a half million households already in stress, I ran some sensitivities on what would happen if interest rates started to rise. And I basically said, what would happen if rates moved half a percent, one percent, three, four, five, six, and seven percent today? And here are the estimated additional mortgage stressed households that would be caught if rates would arise. So another 150,000 would fall into the category if rates went up half a percent, plus another 176,000 if it was 1%, plus another 200,000 if it was 2%, plus another 200,000 if it was 2.5%, plus another 200,000 if it was 3%, plus another 200,000 if it was 4%, plus 185,000 if it went up 5%, plus 173,000 if it went up 6%, etc., etc. So this shows that even small incremental movements in the real mortgage rate would have a significant impact. Now, I would remind you again, just as the Reserve Bank in New Zealand said, that rates going up doesn't necessarily mean people are going to fall over straight away, but it does mean that people are going to have to prioritise their spending, essentially cut back on essentials, and potentially think about selling their property or changing their living accommodation in some way to try and deal with it. And we'll talk at the end of this show about some of the strategies that people might consider now adopting to try and deal with some of this financial stress. But before I do that, let me just take you to our stress mapping because one of the other things that we are able to do is to present our information in a rather different way. This particular way shows each of the postcodes colorized by the count of households in mortgage stress. Again, using the January 22 data. And the way to read this is the bluey ones are the lowest levels of stress are so places like Hunter's Hill, if I take C as an example, uh, or Camaray. Whereas if you go down the page, uh, the colours essentially turn into through yellow and into orange and red. Now, if we pull out from the centre of Sydney, you can start to see that there are some interesting pockets. North Bondi and Bondi Beach, for example, and around Randwick has higher levels of stress. Ride is an area where there is also some stress. And as we pull out further, we start to see that the patterns become quite predictable to an extent. And we also start to see that over in Western Sydney, some of the most significant numbers of households show up. This is, of course, the area around Liverpool, which is a real hotspot, as I showed in my individual analysis before. Blacktown is also there, not quite as high. But if you pull out further, you can really start to see that Western Sydney and Campbelltown is a problem. And the point I want to make is that the mortgage stress mapping highlights the hotspots. It highlights where there are going to be issues. And quite often this means that we would expect to see downward pressure on house prices first in these areas. And remember that these are areas also of high growth and more home and land packages coming on the market. So that can be a problem. So now let me switch across to Melbourne. And here we're again starting in the centre of Melbourne and moving out. We can start to see already some quite interesting patterns in terms of mortgage stress. Areas over in the Wyndham direction uh, are significantly under pressure in terms of the numbers, just the sheer numbers. And as we pull out, we do start to see some quite significant patterns emerging. Where again, and no surprise, it's the high growth corridors that register the most significant mortgage stress down towards Casey, for example, and down along. 3806, 3805, you remember those from our earlier conversations. And as we pull out, it becomes clearer and clearer 
where those hot spots actually are. And if we pull out far enough, we also start to see some regional areas. Here's Ballarat just coming into shot now. And the point I want to make is that there are specific areas where in the high growth corridors, significant pressures exist today. And yet there are still more properties being built and more people being persuaded to buy in. I think that's a bit of a problem. Now, let's just look at Brisbane quickly. And the overall levels of stress are lower in and around Brisbane, but they do still exist. And interestingly, again, as you pull out, you begin to see particular areas, some of those beyond Brisbane itself, like Ipswich, for example, which really shows up as a hotspot area and some areas north of Brisbane too, and some areas just south of Brisbane. So again, it's a patchwork quilt of differences, but there are some hotspots that are quite significant, despite the fact that the overall level of stress in Brisbane is somewhat lower, which suggests to me that prices in Brisbane may have more momentum than some other states ahead, but we'll see. And just to finish our exploration of mapping, I'm just going over to Perth, and again, Perth's quite an interesting area insofar that until recently, everyone was saying Perth's market is recovering, everything's fine. But again, if you look below the surface, you do start to see some pockets. It's pretty OK close into the centre of Perth. But if you go up to Wanneroo, it's a whole different ball game, 6065. And as you pull out, you start to realise that there are hotspot areas down the coast, for example, north and south of Perth as well as other hotspots in and around the city. And whilst Perth may appear to be performing better than recently we've seen down the East Coast, I would make the point that prices in many areas in Perth are still significantly lower than they were a decade ago. And there are many people who are still underwater in terms of negative equity. Right, so that's given you a bit of a flavour. I do have maps for rental stress and investor stress and overall financial stress. And if you like, I can make a separate show on that mapping. It's just this show is going to get too long if I go into that degree of detail. But I will just make three points to close out this. Rental stress, mortgage stress and investor stress is a big deal. That article from the Reserve Bank in New Zealand highlights the risk to the economy. When people are having to pay more for their property, they will prioritise that. They will spend less. As rates rise, the pressures continue. And of course, the fact of the matter is we do not see income growth, particularly amongst those households in financial stress coming through. So that's a problem. I also make the point once again that when I interview households through our surveys, less than half have a strong sense of what their financial footprint actually is. Less than half have a cash flow. Many people don't even know the interest rates they're paying on their mortgages. So one option for people who are beginning to realise that they have financial issues is to begin to capture data on what you're spending, where you're spending it and what interest rates you're actually paying. Once you've got that, you can then prioritise and perhaps decide to spend less here and prioritise spending over there. Most people will prioritise absolutely spending on their mortgage or spending on their rent because they need somewhere to live. Of course, the question then becomes, well, what other expenditure patterns do you give up? For example, in my surveys, I see people who've given up on dental treatment or taken their kids out of fee paying schools just to make ends meet. The other point is that many people still are of the view that things will get better because incomes are going to bounce higher. Well, maybe, but even the Reserve Bank is saying that's going to be two or three years at best. And bearing in mind how good the Reserve Bank has been at forecasting forward views as to where incomes are going, I wouldn't hold your breath. Another point is this, 
banks have an obligation to assist in case of hardship. So it is worth talking to the bank. Many people don't want to talk to them. They don't want to alert the bank when they may have issues. And interestingly, CBA this last week did make the point that they are looking at some initiatives to try and help people with this problem as rates rise. Now, those strategies could include refinancing, restructuring the loan, moving to interest only, etc. Et the trouble is that some of those strategies just push the problem down the track. And if, in fact, the real problem is that you're spending too much relative to income, it's not necessarily going to solve anything. And sometimes in my models and in my surveys, I actually see people who refinance once or twice pull more equity out of their property to try and solve the problem, but they don't change their behaviour in terms of their spending patterns. And the other factor that I'm also seeing now is that some banks are starting to just quietly whisper to people who are in financial difficulty that they should consider selling their property releasing the equity, of course, which means paying back the bank, because their financial profile has fundamentally changed and won't get better. Now, that's a tough conversation, but of course, the last thing the bank wants to do is to foreclose on a mortgage holder. So it is worth talking to the bank, but also getting enough ammunition to be able to show them that one, you understand the issue, and two, you've got a strategy potentially to deal with it. So it is worth talking to the bank, but go armed and prepared. And the final point is this. I still see the head in the sand attitude. In other words, she'll be right. I'll just keep paying the mortgage. And as long as I keep paying the mortgage, come hell or high water, things will be fine. Except that there is significant correlation between high levels of financial stress and social stress. High levels of financial stress and Increasing crime, for example, or increasing violence. So there are social issues that are flowing off the back of this financial bear trap that's been created. It's been created, of course, not so much by individuals who are just trying to get into the market or trying to find somewhere to live, but by the policymakers and the Reserve Bank as they've taken interest rates too low and the banks allowing lending to just take off and become criminally large. Unfortunately, this unwinding is going to be difficult. And whilst mortgage stress doesn't necessarily correlate directly into defaults, the overall pressure on households continues to build and will continue to build ahead. So I think there's a message for individual households. If you are feeling it, don't just ignore it start planning to take some action. And I've also got a message for politicians as well, and the Reserve Bank. Listen to what the Reserve Bank in New Zealand is saying, that there is a considerable risk here to the broader economic performance of the country because of the overlending that has been done and is still being done today. We do need a change of policy and a change of direction. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.